चलो द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर विच यू आर गोइंग टू रिवाइज द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर विच यू आर गोइंग टू रिवाइज इज द चैप्टर ऑफ टाइम ऑफ सप्लाई एवरी वन लेट्स टेक ए क्विक लिंकिंग फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स गो अहेड एंड टेक ए क्विक लिंकिंग वेन एवर गुड्स और सर्विसेस आर बींग सप्लाइड सप्लाई कैन बी आईदर इंटरस्टेट और सप्लाई कैन बी आईदर इंटरस्टेट इंटरस्टेट और इंटरस्टेट सर जीएसटी विल बी लेविड वन जीएसटी वॉज लेविड इट हैज टू बी कलेक्टेड एंड पेड बाई ए टैक्सेबल पर्सन सर हाउ विल कलेक्ट ही विल कैलकुलेट जीएसटी इज इक्वल टू वैल्यू ऑफ सप्लाई इन टू रेट ऑफ टैक्स सर इफ आई नो द वैल्यू I know the rate of tax. I can go ahead and raise the tax invoice, tax invoice, credit note, and debit note. Yes, sir. We went ahead and learned this. Then, sir, once he has gone ahead and raised this tax invoice, credit note, debit note, now he will go ahead and maintain the accounts and records. Yes, sir. He will go ahead and maintain the accounts and records, and he will send the goods to the other person with the help of a e-way bill. Yes, sir. We remember this. Now, once the accounts and records are being maintained. government is going ahead and telling ramesh what are you waiting for you did the supply you calculated gst you went ahead and raised the tax invoice now you maintain your accounts and you have also sent the goods what are you waiting for ramesh your liability to pay gst has come ramesh your time has come bad so sir the other name for the chapter when do you become liable to pay gst is the chapter of time of supply time of supply is that time when your time has come bad sir section number 12 talks about time of supply means when do you become liable in case of supply of goods section number 13 says when do you become liable time of supply in case of services and section number 14 deals with rate change whenever there is a change in the rate of tax what will be the time of supply and rate that is being told in section number 14 which talks about time of supply in case of change in rate of tax okay sir let's go ahead and start with liability to pay that is time of supply everyone over here time of supply always remember time of supply is that time when your time has come bad you become liable to pay sir who told i become liable to pay when my time has come bad section number 12 when you start reading section number 12 may section number 12 1 will go ahead and tell you your liability to pay tax your liability to pay tax on supply of goods basically comes at the shall arise at the time of supply means when do you become liable you become liable to pay gst on the time of supply at the time of supply now section number 12 to goes ahead and talks about when do you become liable as a supplier so if i have gone ahead and supplied something under forward charge mechanism from supplier's point of view date of issue of invoice or last date to issue invoice sir what is the last date to go ahead and issue invoice it is on or before removal or delivery or making it available on or before removal or delivery or making it available i should go ahead and raise the invoice if it's a continuous supply of goods ka case then it is successive payment or when successive successive statement or when it's a case of when such successive successive statement are being issued or when it is payment which is being involved when such payments are being received on or before on or before such payments are being received yes sir point is clear so successive payment or successive statement ka case mein you also you have to go ahead and raise the invoice on or before such successive statement or such payment is being received yes sir point is clear so date of issue of invoice or last date to issue invoice or or date of receipt of payment whichever is earlier but always remember what do you mean by date of receipt of payment date of receipt of payment is book entry or credit in the bank account whichever is earlier now listen to me very carefully one notification number 66 bar 2017 was being issued where government went ahead and told supplier of goods not to pay tax on advance and hence if you are a supplier of goods you don't have to pay gst on the receipt of advance that is whenever you receive the payment you don't have to go ahead and pay the gst you have to go ahead and decide your time of supply based on section number 12 a that is date of invoice or last date to go ahead and issue invoice whichever is earlier okay sir point is clear section number 12 3 says if somebody went ahead and supplied you goods on which you are liable to pay gst under rcm when will you pay baba 
reverse charge mechanism in case of supply of goods is not applicable for CA finance syllabus. But what what goods pay reverse charge me mechanism is applicable that is not applicable for your CA finance syllabus. But time of supply is applicable. So if somebody has gone ahead and for an example, one agriculture supplied me BD leaves. On that BD leaves, I am liable to pay GST under RCM. Sir, when? They are telling date of receipt of goods or date of payment which is I will make the payment to the agriculture is book entry or debit in my bank account whichever is earlier will be my date of payment or date immediately following 30 days from date of invoice or other document by the supplier. Always remember if my supplier is registered he will give me a tax invoice. If my supplier is registered he will give me a tax invoice. Unregistered he will give me any other document which might be a commercial invoice or a bill always remember date of receipt of goods or date of payment or 31st day it is basically date immediately following 30 days from the date of invoice by the supplier is the 31st day whichever is earlier always remember if this this and this is not available if a b c is not available please go ahead and take the book entry date of the recipient i will go ahead and record cash ka expense entry so for an example i'll record expense ka entry for an example purchase account debit to cash that entry i have to go ahead and take as my time of supply okay sir point is clear section number 12 4 goes ahead and talks about sir time of supply in case of voucher if voucher ka case may always remember is the supply identifiable at the time of issue of voucher yes sir supply is identifiable time of supply is date of issue i hope you guys understand now for this i have given one example Reliance footprint voucher when Reliance went ahead and issued footprint ka voucher Reliance knows the supply is going to be footprint foot footwear basically and hence that time of issue time of issue of voucher is the time of supply but sir if supply is not identifiable then when the actual person comes and redeems that will become the time of supply for an example shopper stop voucher when shopper stop issues the voucher shopper stop doesn't know what is the person going to buy so actually when the person comes and redeems the voucher that is the time of supply with respect to the voucher Section number 12.5 goes ahead and talks about raised dairy cases. Sir, if you are not falling here or here or here, Baba, you don't cut. I have gone ahead and cut. You don't cut it. If you are not falling in 12.2, 12.3, 12.4, basically you are falling in raised dairy case. See to it that if you are a registered person, your time of supply is the due date of return. But if you are unregistered person, the day you go ahead and make the payment, that is only your bad day. That is only your time of supply for an example mr a is a person who has not taken registration but he was caught in an investigation and now he's telling okay sir i'm sorry i want to pay and close but he will tell sir i'm not a registered person what is my time of supply so the officer will tell you pay baba you pay the day you pay that will become your time of supply next section number 12 6 talks about interest penalty and late fee what is the time of supply in case of ipl the day you receive that is only your date of receipt is only your bad day that will become your time of supply okay sir section number 13 same one two three four five six section number 13 one goes ahead and says in case of services what is the time of supply baba liability to, sorry in case of services when will the liability come liability will come at the time of supply let's determine time of supply section number 13 2 says forward charge mechanism may what is your time of supply sir is the supply is, is the invoice Raised on time. Yes, sir. I've gone ahead and raised on invoice on time. Baba, if you, I, I hope you guys remember invoice should be raised within on or before 30 days. In case of NBFI, it is 45 days. Now, NBFC, banking company, financial institution, and insurance company, it is 45 days. So, sir, it is telling if the invoice, if it's a uh, continuous supply of service ka case, I hope you guys remember if due date of payment is ascertainable, on or before due date, due date of payment is not ascertainable. On or before the payment, sir, if payment is linked to completion on or before completion of the event, then Baba, you have to go ahead and raise the invoice. If the invoice is not time, yes, sir, date of invoice or date of receipt of payment, whichever is earlier. But sir, if the invoice is not raised on time, the day you provided the service, date of provisioning of service or date of receipt of payment, whichever is earlier. One point to remember over here is if you have gone ahead and received small advance, which is up to 1000 rupees, then Baba, the time of supply will be your option. Either you pay on the date of receipt or you can go ahead and pay the day you go ahead and raise the invoice with respect to that small advance okay sir it's the option of the supplier he can go ahead and pay when he actually goes ahead and raises the invoice for that small amount next 
Sir, section number 132C, 132C goes ahead and talks about, sir, if you are not falling in this case or this case, then where will you go? Then they are going ahead and telling supplier ka time of supply will be based on recipient ka book entry date. So, if 132A and 132B is not applicable, then always remember it's a different kind of a scenario where my time of supply will be based on book entry date of the recipient. Basically, expense entry will be done by the recipient. That day will become my time of supply. Then we have section number 133. Always remember in case of goods, it is date of receipt of goods, date of payment or 31st day from the invoice by the supplier. But in case of services, date of receipt of goods will not be there. It will be date of payment or 31st day will be added. We will add 30 more days over here and it will become 61st day. So date of payment or it is date immediately following 60 days from the date of invoice or other document by the supplier, whichever is earlier. Okay, sir. So this is only here. But here, the only difference is date of receipt of goods has been deleted. 31st day has been made 61st day. Okay, sir, got it. If A and B is not available, always remember your books may the expense entry will become the time of supply. Expense entry date, book entry date of the recipient, that is, expense entry date will become the time of supply. Always remember generally. In case of reverse charge mechanism, always it will be date of payment or 61st day. But if you have imported service from associate enterprise, importation of service, importation of service from associate enterprise total, then it will be date of payment or 61st day will not be there. Here it will become date of entry in the books of account of the recipient. I'll make a book entry, the book entry date or the day I go ahead and make the payment, whichever is earlier has to be taken as the time of supply 134 voucher same as 124 135 residuary case same as 125 136 interest penalty and late fee same as 126 okay sir section number 12 section number 13 done section number 14 in your next page section number 14 goes ahead and talks about time of supply in case of change in rate of tax always remember one one thing everyone Time of supply in case of change in rate of tax. You have to always remember is the supply done before the rate change or the supply is done after the rate change. If your supply is done before the rate change, you will fall this side. If your supply is done after the rate change, you will fall this side. So, sir, is the supply before? If your supply is done before, invoice is before or payment is before? Sir, invoice is before. Then, Baba, date of invoice and before wala rate will apply. So, we are talking on before ka case. If invoice is before, date of invoice will become your time of supply and before wala rate will apply. Sir, supply done before, rate change, supply done before, payment is before, invoice is after. What is before? You are talking on before ka case. What is before? Payment is before, date of payment will be your time of supply and before wala rate, old rate will apply. Sir, goods and service applied before, invoice also after, payment also after, then Baba, whichever is earlier has to be taken and because both are after, whichever is earlier, it will fall over here, new rate has to be taken. Always remember one thing, goods and service, this is the rate change, goods and service applied before, invoice is before, payment is after, date of invoice, time of supply and before wallet rate. Sir, goods and service applied before, date of payment and date of invoice is after, date of payment is before then date of payment will become your time of supply and old rate. Sir, goods and services supplied before, invoice also after, payment also after, whichever is earlier in these two and new rate shall, new rate shall apply. Okay, sir, rate change happened over here. Goods and service supplied after, goods and service supplied after. This is the rate change, goods and service supplied after. Pay, invoice is also after, but payment is before, date of invoice and new rate shall apply. Sir, goods and service supplied after. Date of payment is after, invoice is before, so date of payment will become your time of supply and new rate will apply. Sir, this is the rate change, goods and service supplied after, but payment also before, invoice also before, then among these two, whichever is earlier and before, well, rate will apply. Okay, sir, got it. Always remember one thing, the special procedure that supplier not to pay GST on receipt of advance is applicable in section number 14 also. Okay, sir, and hence, if you have gone ahead and received any advance on that, you will not be liable to pay GST. Okay, sir. Got it. Next. Generally, always remember generally the date of receipt of payment. The date of receipt of payment is book entry or credit, whichever is earlier. But in case of rate change, in case of rate change, if, if always remember here rate change happened and your 
check has been created within four working days then it will be book entry or credit whichever is earlier so you will take book entry date as the date of payment date of receipt of payment but sir if rate change happened over here and the amount is created after four working days might be eight working days then then they are telling book entry date will not be taken you will have to go ahead and take credit in the bank account as your date of payment okay sir got it everyone over here now so it says proviso to section number 14 date of receipt of payment is date of credit in the bank account if credit is after four working days but if credit is within four working days or by four working days basically within four working days if the credit is done then it is book entry or credit whichever is earlier if not created within four working days always remember date of credit will be taken as the date of pay receipt of payment here we are done with section number 12 section number 13 and section number 14 with respect to time of supply